Okay, so I'm gonna quickly um, try and show the difference between the new um, uh, XML profiler wizard between uh, um, the Windows version and the Mac version, because there's a couple of small differences. So just as a reminder, this is the Windows version. I'm starting from here. Um, you can access it from the um, uh, Mark tools, edit XML function list, the wizard runs from here. Um, essentially, to use the wizard, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, you give it a name, you give it the type of file, a sample file that you want to process. So in this case, I'll say a past perfect one. You're going to generate <clears throat> an X profile file. So profile file. So that's going to actually be where you're going to store all of the um, information about how to translate that data. And on the Windows version, when you go next, it shows this stuff in a tool, a, um, a tree view. Um, you select at the level where the record data is. So in this case, if you looked at it, this would be the bibliographic data. So you would select that option, go to the next field, and then you can map the data. And when you're finished, it saves it as an X profile format um, that then gets loaded into Mark Edit so that you can translate the data. Um, so that's the Windows version. So I'm going to now share this. I'm going to uh, turn this off. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to flip over to my Mac and I'm going to share from there. Okay, so I should be unmuted now on my Mac. And so let me go ahead and share this screen. Okay, so I think, there we go. So now I should see my Mac screen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start up Mark Edit. So I've been working on this. This will be posted here shortly. Um, so let this thing boot up. It's uh, going to take a second because I haven't run this yet since I recompiled the data. All right, so this is the Mac version. So just like the Windows version, you find the piece in the Mark Tools. Uh, you'll go under Tools, Edit XML Functions, and you'll see this button's now been enabled. So JSON Wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a quick transformation. I created another one that I deleted and I'm going to put this one back um, just so we can walk through all the steps. So again, I threw a copy of the past perfect file on this computer before I moved over here. So it lives right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a profile file. So this is where I'm saving it. So I'm going to put it into the profile directory because I'm put it here, demo profile. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go next. All right, so it looks kind of the same, but not exactly the same. So one of the challenges I had um, with the Mac version is a tree view in the Mac operating system isn't really a tree view. So um, the Apple has these things called um, uh, what they call outline, NS outline views. They're essentially just uh, special tables. Um, inside of MarkEdit, the tool has um, uh, define special table functions um, for the NS table view uh, spec rather than having to rewrite another one to show the um, uh, tree view control. Um, the way that this works is it's going to show you the top level objects over here and when you click on them you'll see the, the output on this side. Um, what that means is that you, the tool will select over here the top level option that you pick. So in this case the top level for the, um, uh, the document uh, metadata object is report data. Um, if I wanted to select the top level for the entire document, I could just like the Windows version, I would check this and it would take the top level document. If for some reason the top level document wasn't the um, bibliographic element, but let's say inside here there was another object. So let's say it would be like let's say object ID was the metadata object for the record. Um, I could change the dot, the dot, the information here. 
and then the tool will use that as the um, the record object to traverse to do the work. So in this case, it is this one. So I'm going to select that one again. Go to next. So the interface is slightly different. So unlike the Windows version, which showed you um, a preview on top, Mark Edit shows you a preview of the field and then the data inside of one of the, the name of the field and a sample of the data for the first element inside that field. So again, I can go through here and I can say, okay, here's the title, uh, map that title to 245 subfield A um, and go ahead and add that argument. And then I can say, okay, the creator, that's a 700 subfield A and indicators and add that argument. And then I can say um, that there's a description and that's gonna be a 500 subfield A and indicators. Uh, so I can go ahead and add my arguments. And then when I'm finished, uh, just like in the Windows version, if I wanted to join things, I could select two objects and hit join. Uh, delete, we'll delete the items. Um, if I wanted to reload for editing one of these profiles, I click load profile and it would let me reload it. I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. So it saved the profile. So now when I go back to the Mac version and I look, um, I'll find the one that I uh, just created. It should be that one, but I'm gonna close this just in case. Um, so I did create another one. Yeah, there we go. So past perfect test. So if I go ahead and I grab that past perfect file again, and then I want to save it as a test record. I can go ahead and process that data. Mark edit recognizes that it's a profile file. And so now I can go back here and open up that MRC file. Save it into the desktop, didn't I? Oh, where did I put it? This one, it doesn't look right. Yeah, that's what, that's the one it was. All right, so I guess I named something that I did differently, but you can see it goes ahead and does the translation. So in this case, it generated those because those are part of the, the default profile section. Um, that's the data that got mapped by the one piece. That's the next piece of data that got mapped and then the 700. So just like the Windows version now, you can pass those in. Um, if you create an X profile document on the Windows version, you can copy it to a Mac and use the exact same version um, on the same file and vice versa. The only difference right now in the Mac version to the Windows version is so that I can get this out to folks so they can start playing with it. Um, the Mac version doesn't include the JSON part yet. So um, again, the JSON transformations are kind of quirky um, because of the, um, the work that needs to be done inside of the, uh, uh, the tree processing. Um, and because I don't have a tree view control on the Apple side, um, I'm still trying to figure out how to represent that inside the new control interface. Um, so uh, I'm hoping to get that sorted out probably in the next day or two, but I wanted to get this out um, now so that way people can start using it. And that's essentially um, what this looks like. This will be um, in the uh, current version of the Mac system. Um, it'll be uh, two, what is it? 3.250-ish. As long as this, uh, as long as when I post this to Apple, it notarizes, it'll be 3.250. Otherwise, it might be 3.2512, something like that, if there's an error on the notarization. So that's it. Uh, if you have questions, you can let me know.